Disclaimer. Please forgive me now for there may be mispronunciations in this video. Werewolves are shape-shifting monsters that have been written and drawn about since we wrote on cave walls. They are heard in almost every continent. I've done quite a few videos on werewolves, but these seven I'm about to tell you about are a little less heard of or talked about that are best put into a grouping video, so I hope you enjoy. The Lobissimum is a Brazilian werewolf. Half man, half wolf on the full moon night, it is thought that this werewolf mainly attacks women. While in human form, the werewolf is a little over two feet in height and resembles a furry monkey with a bald head. It is said to have an evil face and large feet that gives it a stealthy advantage. Started after the conquest of America, the Lubazon is a werewolf that is well known in all provinces of Argentina and parts of Brazil, Uruguay, and Paraguay. The Argentines only worry about the Lubazon when the moon is full, suspecting that they are created by being the seventh son of the family of only boys. When the Lubazon usually prefers to attack cattle, Argentines take care to keep out of its way. They also believe that if anyone is bitten by the Lubazon while in wolf form, will automatically become one. Described as looking like a big black dog with brilliant eyes. To prevent the damnation of the seventh son turning into a Lubazon, they were rather often abandoned or killed. Since 1920, the president of Argentina became the official godfather to these children. When they were baptized, he became their godfather and gave them a gold medal and the state awarded them with a scholarship until they were 21 years old. This practice still continues to this day. In Guarani mythology, the Lubazon is the offspring of Teu, an evil spirit, and Karana, a mortal woman. And in some cultures, it is believed that the Lubazon acts as sort of a grim reaper, whose mere presence means that death will soon befall those it comes into contact with. The Vilcasas are the werewolves of Lativia. It is not your traditional werewolf that changes by ointment or built, but by the human sending their soul into another creature, most particularly a wolf. The process is dangerous and even deadly, and sometimes the soul that has left the human may not return back to its own body, causing the human to die, as a body cannot live without its soul. Like the Vicasis, the Negro of Mesoamerica can transform himself into his animal companion form. This sorcerer can only do this at night. Any wound inflicted on the animal when being controlled by the Negro will show on the human body when the Negro changes back. There is a link between human and animal that is established at birth, but it all depends on the day that the sorcerer is born. For example, a person born on a day representing the wolf might have a special affinity with wolves. However, most common forms chosen by the Negwals are owls, bats, jaguars, and pumas. There are stories that talk of the Negwal feeding on sleeping children, sucking the blood and causing disease. To deter this from happening, the parents would hang mirrors above the children's bed. The reflection of the child is said to ward off the Negwal. The shape-shifting sorcerer predates the arrival of Europeans and are even sometimes accepted in a society. Pliny the Elder wrote in his book entitled Natural History about a species of dogmen. They were called a Sinocyphili, allegedly lived in India. They had the bodies of men with a distinct dog or wolf head. He wrote that they lived in caves, wore animal skins, and used regular weapons like bows and swords. Surprisingly, the Greek physician Theseus wrote about the Sinocyphili at most 500 years earlier and stated that they should be avoided. Marco Polo also wrote about them during his famous travels in the late 1200s. It is said that they lived in the mountains around the upper Indus River. They spoke only in harsh barking tongue or expressions of the hands when they dealt with other races. Persians found them exceptionally fierce and warlike, with a great appetite for human flesh and were indeed cannibals. For the most part they were farmers, growing crops and tilling the land, but other than that they could be extremely savage and ferocious if a stranger wandered into the area, attacking or killing like a dog would. Some tales speak of a woman who is condemned to spend seven years in wolf form. She is visited by a wolf skin wearing spirit who orders her to wear the skin forced 
to taste wolf blood hailing from the sky. This causes her to crave for human flesh. The she-wolf devours each of her own children, then the children close to her, and then finally children of the strangers. She wanders at night, but when morning arrives, she reverts to human form and removes her wolf skin. The transformation is said to be involuntary, but there are other versions involving voluntary metamorphosis, where the woman can transform at will. These werewolves can run like the wind and are able to make a journey of many days in one hour. The only way to save yourself from one of these beasts is to take and burn the pelt. The martigo hides its skin during the day, making it difficult to find. After seven years, the wolf skin will ascend to heaven, and the person returns to being a normal human. If there's any trace of remains of the world left behind, it'd be the tail. There's an astral myth related to martigals. Once a martigo woman attempted to devour her guest, who pierced her breast with a dagger while defending. Milk that spurted from the wound formed the Milky Way. A Vorkalak in Romanian folklore refers to many different figures, but in some version it is a wolf demon. A Romanian Vorkalak means both werewolf and goblin. Some legends say it is a ghost or a vampire, also known as a stragoi, while others say it is a werewolf. There are several different explanations for the Vorkalak's origin. The werewolf may emerge from the corpses of babies, souls are unbaptized children or children of unmarried parents, cursed by God because one swept dust out of the house at sunset, and in the direction of the sun rising if a woman spin at night without a candle or cast spells as they spin. What did you think of these seven werewolves? Did you like this video? Want to support this channel? Feel free to check out my Patreon page where I create content on cryptids, haunting, serious killers, alien abductions, and much more. Can't support me there? Like, comment, and subscribe here.